This Elden Ring series covers how to do all quests and missable content in order so that all choices and rewards will be available. For best results, you'll want to follow this series from the start of Part 1. There will be spoilers in the form of important information, and as usual, useful timestamps can be found in the video description. A quick but helpful tangent before starting. We're going to be dealing with Scarlet Rot, which is a status condition that is similar to poison but far more deadly. The best way to deal with it can be found a short distance southeast of the Church of Vows. It's the Flame, Cleanse Me incantation, and it cures Scarlet Rot and Poison. It only requires a faith of 12 to cast, which any character base besides the Prisoner can achieve by equipping the Two Fingers Heirloom Talisman, which we got in Part 2. You'll also need a seal to cast the incantation, and the Clawmark seal we got from Garonk in Part 1 is perfect. At the end of Part 2, we had just initiated the Radon Festival, and I said we're going to hold off on doing that until after Salavis' quest. Welp, there's been a change in plans, and the next step of our journey is in Kaled, but don't worry, we will still be able to complete Salavis' quest. First things first, if you haven't defeated the Anastasia Tarnished Eater Invader at Smoldering Church, go ahead and do that now. You'll get the Sacred Scorpion Charm Talisman for defeating her. Venture southeast into Kaled, picking up the map fragment near the southern Aeonia Swamp Bank, and if you followed my advice at the start of Part 2 and defeated Grail, the enormous dragon near Fort Faroth, you can make a quick stop at the Cathedral of Dragon Communion to get the Grail's Roar legendary incantation in exchange for three dragon hearts. In any case, travel northeast to Gowrie's Shack, where a new NPC, Gowrie, can be found. Be careful not to get the attention of the Kaled dog outside, as it can inadvertently hit Gowrie, Hear his request and Gary will ask you to locate an unalloyed gold needle in the swamps of Aeonia. This is the start of Millicent's questline, an NPC which we have yet to meet. There is one other curious interaction. If you attack Gary at this point, he will turn into a pest upon death. When you reload the game, he will be back alive and well. At a later point in Millicent's questline, Gary will stay dead if he dies, but not for now. Make your way west and discover the inner Aeonia site of grace. Head a short distance to the southwest if you want to face off with Millicent as an invader. And this must be done before giving the unalloyed gold needle to Millicent. Whether or not you do this has no effect on Millicent's questline, and all you get for defeating Millicent here are some runes and a sacramental bud, so you won't be missing out on any unique rewards if you decide not to do this. As a quick aside, if you see the alternate character label on the top right of the screen, it just indicates that the gameplay being shown is from a different character than the main one that I'm using for this walkthrough series. You should also take note of the Celia Crystal Tunnel to the north of the Inner Aeonia Grace. It might be a bit too challenging at the moment, however, once you've gotten strong enough, it's a great place to get level 5 smithing stones and level 4 somber smithing stones. In addition, the Falling Star Beast boss at the end drops the Somber Stone Miner's Bell Bearing 1, along with 5 level 7 smithing stones and a level 6 somber smithing stone. The main objective here is defeating Commander O'Neill, located in a clearing a short distance to the southeast of the Inner Aeonia Grace. You can summon Pollyanna, adopted daughter, to assist in the fight against Commander O'Neill, however, there is also a great cheese tactic. Just kite Commander O'Neill into the Scarlet Rot geysers near the Inner Aeonia Grace, and they will take care of him in short order. As long as you don't summon any NPCs or companions, you can stay on your mount to avoid Scarlet Rot buildup. O'Neill drops the Commander Standard and Unalloyed Gold Needle when defeated. Bring the needle back to Gowrie and you'll get the note on Celia's secret, which tells how to open the magic seals throughout the town of Celia. Before doing that, reload the game and speak with Gowrie again to get the repaired unalloyed gold needle. Next, we'll open the seals around Celia by lighting the flames at the tops of the three candle towers. I found the best starting point to be near an Urtree sapling, where you can also get a golden seed. From there, it's a relatively short and straight path riding across rooftops and vines on Torrent to reach the three candle towers.
return to the Erdtree sapling and make your way through the now-opened seal to the Celia backstreets. Head up along the path and travel a short distance south to reach the Church of the Plague. There you'll find Millicent in a state of deterioration, along with a sacred tear. Upon arrival, quickly rest at the site of grace to prevent the nearby pest enemies from putting Millicent in danger. Give Millicent the unalloyed gold needle and then reload the game by sitting at the site of grace. Speak with Millicent again to get the prosthesis wearer's heirloom talisman, go through all the rest of her dialogue, then reload the game again and she should be gone. Carefully make your way back down to Gowrie's shack where you'll now find Millicent instead of Gowrie. Speak through all of her dialogue, reload the game, and she will be gone. Gowry will be back with new dialogue along with a few spells available for purchase, including the surprisingly effective Night Maiden's Mist. Next, we'll make a quick stop at Fort Faroth for Radagon's Source Seal, a great legendary talisman. Risk of death at the fort is high, so you might want to spend any runes you have before continuing just in case. Enter the fort and weave through the bottom floor, quickly locating and climbing the ladder to the upper level. You might as well grab the right half of the Dectus Medallion at the top of the ladder before proceeding. On the roof below, find the pit with a ladder poking out and drop in. You'll then need to sprint and jump to reach a secluded area that leads to yet another pit. Dodge past the deadly rats and drop down to find the legendary talisman nearby. If you can climb up the ladder without the rodent stopping you, then it's fairly easy to make your escape from the fort. If you don't have the other Caleb map fragment, head west along the road from Fort Faroth. You'll find the map fragment near the Dragon Barrel West Site of Grace. I also spent 40 minutes fighting the Godskin Apostle at the Divine Tower of Kaelid in order to get the legendary Godslayer Greatsword. I did this because it's really good, and you may see me using it in this video. However, the Godskin Apostle is extremely difficult, and I don't recommend going out of your way to get this weapon, at least not at this point. All that said, if you're interested, you'll find a link to a guide on how to get it near the bottom of this video's description. And now we're ready to take on Radon. Travel south from the Southern Aeonia Swamp Bank to the Impassable Great Bridge. There is a transporter there that will take you to the chamber outside of the plaza site of Grace. The festival is taking place inside the plaza, where several NPCs can be found, some familiar and some new. One of those new NPCs is Jaren. If you want to hear his announcement, approach the podium to the north and hold off on speaking to any of the other NPCs. Doing so will interrupt Jaren's speech and he doesn't like repeating himself. Before speaking to Jaren directly, take a moment to speak with Blythe, Alexander, and Finger Maiden Theralina. Theralina won't have anything to say, but she will give you the polite bow gesture. Once you're done speaking with everyone, make your way up to Jaren and initiate the Radon fight. After a short cutscene, Jaren will give another quick speech, which will unlock the heartening cry gesture. Head through the chapel, find the lift, and take it down to the battlefield. If you don't want any boss spoilers, you can skip to the next timestamp, otherwise I'm going to talk strategy for Radon, but I'll keep it brief. You want to spend the initial phase of the fight summoning the various NPC allies. Either dodge Radon's gravity arrows or take cover behind debris on the field. Summoning the Great Horned Tragoth here will unlock the casual greeting gesture, but there will be one other opportunity to get it at a different boss fight. Close the distance and Radon will enter his melee phase. Once you've made it to the second phase of the fight, you'll be able to summon any allies that die for another go at it. My last piece of advice is to stay around the highest dune on the battlefield as it provides great cover from Radon's meteor attack. He's not too difficult of a boss as long as you're leaning on allies and have invested a decent number of levels into the vigor stat. Ideally, your vigor stat is between 35 and 40. This is just a recommendation, but a good one to follow. When defeated, Radon will drop the Remembrance of the Star Scourge along with a Great Rune. A short cutscene will play out and you'll appear near a new site of grace on the battlefield. Discover it, then speak with Blythe nearby. Find Alexander picking through remains a short distance to the south. Speak through all of his dialogue until he says just you wait when next we meet, which is followed by a soft chuckle. Return to the chapel at Redmain Castle. Jaren will be sitting in a chair with some new dialogue. After he's said all he has to say, 
Bass travel back to the chamber outside the plaza, and a new boss fight will appear in the plaza where you'll have to face off with a misbegotten warrior and a crucible knight. Their defeat is rewarded with the Ruin's Greatsword, one of the legendary armaments. If the fight proves too difficult, you can always return to do it later. To get a little more backstory on Blythe and E.G., you can go speak with E.G. who will have something to say about Blythe. Then you can actually find Blythe trapped in the Forlorn Hound Everjail, where Darawil was previously fought. After speaking with Blythe at the Everjail, you can release him immediately or go back to E.G. for more information first. None of this will affect the endings for any of the NPCs involved, but it will provide more context to those endings for anyone that's interested. Next, fast travel to Fort Hyde West and make your way down into the new giant crater in the ground. We're going to venture into Nokron Eternal City to get the Finger Slayer Blade. However, and this is crucial, we must avoid speaking with Ronnie after getting the Finger Slayer Blade, as doing so will cause Selavis to die and prevent us from completing his quest. The only time it will be safe to speak with Ronnie once we have the Finger Slayer Blade is after we've gotten the Magic Scorpion Charm from Selavis and his quest. This is really important to remember, so you'll probably hear me repeat it a few times. Near the entrance to Nokron, there is a tricky jump that you'll need to be sprinting for in order to make. If you manage it, you'll get the Ghost Flame Torch, which is hands down the best light source in the game. I put the No Skill Ash of War on it so that I can hold it in my offhand without preventing the use of my main hand weapon skill. Afterwards, continue making your way through to the Nokron Eternal City Site of Grace. As you move through this area, keep an eye out for Ghost Glove Warts levels 3 and 4 to level up your favorite spirit summons. From the Eternal City Site of Grace, continue southeast, eventually arriving at the Mimic Tier boss arena. Unless your own character is extremely overpowered, this boss is relatively easy. It drops two larval tiers and the silver tier mask when defeated. Head northeast along the bridge, exit west onto natural terrain, and find the ancestral wood site of Grace a short distance off the beaten path. From here, we'll make our way into the night sacred ground where the Finger Slayer Blade is kept. You'll eventually reach a crumbling archway. Cross it and enter through a window into the building on the other side. Steer left behind the tombstone and then look towards your right. A fog wall should be visible which can be dispelled with a stone sword key. Inside, you'll find the Mimic Tier Legendary Ashen Remains. It's an excellent spirit summons for low FP characters as it consumes HP rather than FP to summon. As a general tip, the giant metal sphere enemies will usually drop a larval tier the first time they are defeated. You'll eventually arrive at the Night Sacred Ground Site of Grace. From there, head northeast to find the Finger Slayer Blade along with a Great Ghost Glove Ward. Now that we have the Finger Slayer Blade, we must avoid speaking to Ronnie at all costs until we are done with Selavis's quest, which we are going to do in short order. But before that, let's complete the next step in Alexander's questline. First, fast travel to the CO for Riverbank Site of Grace, then move northeast towards the location marked on the map. Eliminate the two ancestral followers standing guard, then climb the ladder onto the scaffolding. There is an easy to miss ledge you can drop down to and from there it's a short walk over to the abandoned merchant. He sells the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 17, 
which we will need to craft oil pots. These are necessary for the next step in Alexander's quest. All that is required to craft an oil pot is a single melted mushroom, which are found in abundance in subterranean areas. One should be enough, but craft a few just in case. Fast travel to the Liernia Highway north site of Grace, then make your way along the northeast path. You should find Alexander stuck in a hole near the cliff overlooking Jarberg. Agree to help him out again, then hit him with an oil pot. A visual effect will let you know that the oil is still applied. Until you see it wear off, swing away with heavy or charged weapon attacks. The last couple of times I've done this, it only took a few swings to knock Alexander loose, and it was always within the duration of a single oil pot. Alexander will give you three exalted flush for your efforts and will hint at his next destination, which will be in Mount Gelmir. Okay, at this point we will be focusing on getting Celevis's quest finished. To start, you'll need to get to Altus Plateau. Travel up the ravine in northern Liernia until you reach the Ravine Veiled Village. Then make your way through the Runestrewn Precipice Dungeon. There are lots of smithing stones leveled 3 through 5 that you can grab to help upgrade your weapon of choice as you make your way through this location. Upon reaching the Precipice Overlook, you'll need to defeat the Magma Worm Makar. If you bought boiled prawns from Blackguard Bogard, you'll be able to summon him to assist with this fight. Helping Millicent earlier means she will also be available to summon. In addition, anyone can summon the Great Horned Tragoth, and doing so will unlock the casual greeting gesture if you didn't get it earlier during the Radon fight. You can only summon two allies to help take on the Magma Worm, so choose wisely. This boss will drop the Magma Worm Scale Sword when defeated. Afterwards, discover the new Site of Grace and ascend into Altus Plateau using the lift. Make your way east towards the Erdtree Gazing Hill. Ancient Dragon Lanciax will swoop in to attack, but you can just run past it. Raya can be found near the Erdtree Gazing Hill in Lux Ruins. She will offer to take you to Volcano Manor. You can accept the offer if you still need the Mount Gelmir map fragment, however, to avoid disrupting other questlines, do not speak with Tanith at the manor. Instead, just discover the Site of Grace there and then head out the main door to the northwest. Wrap down and around the hillside to get to the Mount Gelmir map fragment. Just be sure to watch out for the giant spider hand that is waiting in ambush. Fast travel back to the Erdtree Gazing Hill, proceed east, and discover the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace. Bach will appear nearby if you rest there, though he doesn't have anything new to do just yet. Travel a short distance north to pick up the Altus Plateau map fragment, then double back to the highway junction and keep moving east, into the outskirts of Langdale, Royal Capital. You can fight the two tree sentinels or skip them, whichever you prefer. Grab the Royal Capital map fragment near the outer wall phantom tree, then head southeast to the Minor Erdtree Church, where you'll find the Golden Order seal. In addition, you can speak with Melina when resting at the site of Grace there. Doing so will unlock the Outer Order gesture, which is very easy to miss. If you're on a newer character, I recommend making a trip down to the sealed tunnel at the bottom of the nearby moat. There, you'll find plenty of smithing stones leveled 5 and 6, along with the smithing stone miner's bell bearing too. Prepare yourself for a difficult encounter, then move clockwise around the outer moats of Langdell until reaching the capital rampart. Along the way, you'll find Blackguard Bogard down in one of the moats if you bought boiled prawns from him earlier. He's now selling boiled crab, which is a better version of the boiled prawns, and will have some new dialogue pertaining to the dung eater. A draconic tree sentinel guards the entrance to the royal capital. It's a tough boss, but if you've been visiting these smithing stone mines to upgrade your weapons, it shouldn't be too difficult. A cheese strategy I've read about involves sneaking up behind the sentinel and using the poison mist incantation repeatedly. You can get that spell from a treasure scarab in the southeast region of Weeping Peninsula, location shown on screen. The draconic tree sentinel drops the dragon claw shield and dragon great claw when defeated. Afterwards, make your way into Langdell Royal Capital. When you rest at the East Capital Rampart site of Grace, Melina will appear to thank you before temporarily leaving your company. In addition, Bach will appear nearby, but we're not ready to speak with him just yet. Whatever you do, don't give Bach a larval tear as it will end tragically. 
The only reason we're in Langdale right now is because Dung Eater's quest is holding a lot of other quests up. To that end, we'll work our way into the capital to get a seedbed curse, which is fairly close to the entrance. I'll show the most direct path to the Avenue Balcony and West Capitol Ramparts Sites of Grace before returning to Roundtable Hold. Return to Roundtable Hold and find Dung Eater in a new room near the Twin Maiden Husks. Speak with him multiple times until he hands over the Sewer Jail Key. While at Roundtable Hold, you can upgrade your Spirit Summon of choice with those Ghost Glove Words from Nokron. If you're still waiting to get a particular summon, you can hold off on the upgrades for now. Once you've upgraded a Spirit Summons to plus 4, speaking with Roderica will unlock the Curtsy Gesture. Before leaving, talk to Corrin and he will inform you that he is leaving Roundtable Hold. We will next find him in Altus Plateau. Now let's go find the Dung Eater. Starting from the West Capitol Rampart, head northwest back down to the streets below. A treasure scarab that drops the lightning bolt ash of war when defeated can be found along the way. To the northeast, there is a fairly hidden water well that will take you to the sewers below. Make your way through the sewers until you reach the underground roadside site of grace. From the roadside, head out to the northeast and take the drop on your left down. Follow the path to the northwest and make your way past the few giant poisonous flowers. Climb up the ladder and watch out for the giant spider hand submerged in the ground. On the far side of the chamber, you'll find an iron door that opens with the sewer jail key. Speak with the physical form of Dung Eater inside and tell him to leave, then go through the rest of his dialogue. Return to Roundtable Hold and you'll find a message where Dung Eater normally sits. 
it issues a challenge, the location being the outer moat, which is where Blackguard Bogart moves to after buying boiled prawns off of him. I recommend unearthing the giant crab in the moat and dealing with it before Dung Eater has a chance to show up. If you haven't bought boiled prawns from Bogart, and so he is not at the moat, then Dung Eater will invade shortly after arriving at the moat. On the other hand, if Blackguard Bogart is at the moat, you'll need to speak through all of his dialogue, then reload the game, and speak with him once more. Bogart will die and drop his item set along with his bell bearing and a seed bed curse. Quickly pick it all up and then prepare to face off with the Dung Eater. Dung Eater will drop the Sword of Milos when defeated. If you haven't bought boiled prawns from Bogart because you wanted him to live, well it's now safe to buy them. Afterwards, Bogart will move to the outer moat and begin selling boiled crabs. He won't really have anything new to say or do, but he will be alive. And that's basically the end of Blackguard Bogart's quest. Return to Roundtable Hold and speak multiple times with Dung Eater until he has nothing new to say. Back at the sewer jail, you'll find Dung Eater once again, this time strapped to a chair and accepting seedbed curses. You will also now be able to feed him Celibus's potion if you want. Who you choose to give Celibus' potion is a big decision, so let's go over the rewards and consequences of each choice before picking one. There are three options, Nefeli, Dung Eater, and Gideon. For choice number one, giving the potion to Nefeli will allow you to get a spirit summon version of Nefeli, but will also prevent completion of her full questline. Given that the Nefeli puppet isn't all that good, and completing her quest rewards up to two ancient dragon smithing stones, this is the worst choice in my opinion, and I would only go for it if you want the Nefeli puppet for the sake of completion. For choice number two, giving the potion to Dung Eater will allow you to get a spirit summon version of Dung Eater, but will also prevent completion of his full questline. Given that the Dung Eater puppet is very good, and many people do not care to finish Dung Eater's questline, this seems like a pretty good choice. However, you normally don't get the Omen armor set if you pick this option. One other note, Dung Eater's quest is required for one of the game's endings, specifically the one associated with the Mending Rune of the Fell Curse. Now, it is basically the worst ending in the game and is not required for any achievements or trophies, however, it seemed worth mentioning. Finally, for choice number 3, giving the potion to Gideon will not prevent completion of any questline, but you will miss out on getting either the Dung Eater or Nefeli spirit summons. Personally, I'm trying to do a walkthrough where I complete all the questlines, so I'm going to give this potion to Gideon. However, giving the potion to Dung Eater is a close second on my list. Hopefully that helps you make a well-informed choice on who to give Celibus's potion. Once you've made your decision, return to Celibus at his rise to inform him that the task is complete. Make sure to go through any new dialogue before moving on. At this point, you'll need to locate Celibus' hidden chambers to progress his questline. Go to Ronnie's rise, again avoid Ronnie, and travel northeast. At the first ruins you come across, there is a false floor on the ground that will fade when struck or rolled on, revealing a hidden staircase. Descend and proceed to the opposite side of the chamber. There should be a gold message near the southwest corner of the chamber that reads Celibus's puppet do not touch. There is another false wall you can roll into. Behind it you will find the puppet of either Dung Eater or Nefeli if you gave Celibus's potion to one of them, along with a puppet of Selen. After reading that message, you can return to Celibus at his rise and broach the topic. In response, he should offer up a puppet. To continue Celibus's quest, we'll need access to his puppet shop. It should become available if you have a Starlight Shard in your inventory. However, if you are having trouble getting the new dialogue option to show up, try the following. Drop your Starlight Shards and pick them back up. Quit out of the game to the main menu and then load back in, and fast travel back to Ronnie's Rise and then return to Celibus. As a final desperate measure, go out into the lands between and find another Starlight Shard to pick up. At that point, Celibus should have the I want a new puppet dialogue option that opens up his puppet shop. As a quick side note, if you gave Celibus' potion to Dung Eater, you will be able to purchase the Dung Eater puppet at this time. If you gave the potion to Nefeli, then you will be able to purchase the Dolores puppet at this time, and will get the Nefeli puppet at the end of Celibus' quest. If you gave the potion to Gideon, you'll only have access to the two standard puppets at this time. To progress Celibus' quest, you'll need to purchase at least one more of the puppets he has available, then leave the conversation with him. 
After doing that, speak with Celevis again and choose the new About the Scheme option. This will trigger the next phase of his questline in which he requests that you bring him an Amber Starlight Shard. A single Amber Starlight Shard can be found in a crater to the northeast of the Altus Highway Junction site of Grace in Altus Plateau. After retrieving the Amber Starlight, return to Celevis and give it to him. He will lose himself for a moment, but speak to him a second time to get a rare reward, the Magic Scorpion Charm Talisman, which boosts magical damage while lowering defenses. At this point, you can stop doing Celevis' quest with no consequences to Ronnie's questline. You can also complete his quest and repair the damage done to Ronnie's questline as long as you have some Celestial Dew. It comes down to personal preference as ultimately the outcome is the same. Assuming you want to see Celevis' quest through, reload the game and speak with Celevis to get the Amber Draught. Bring it to Ronnie at the top of her rise. You'll have a choice to administer the Draught. If you select the option not to, the Draught will still disappear from your inventory and you will no longer have that opportunity. The game will act as if you didn't get the Draught to begin with. I found this out by accident because I was trying to get a better clip for this video. If you choose to administer the draw to Ronnie, she will not be happy and will tell you to leave. If you keep speaking to her, you will eventually die. Regardless of what you do after administering the draw to Ronnie, she will disappear from the top of her rise, and you'll then need to seek absolution at the Church of Vows. Doing so will restore Ronnie to friendly status and allow you to continue her quest. If you didn't administer the draw to Ronnie, you can just continue her quest, no absolution required. Assuming that Ronnie is at the top of her rise, give her the Finger Slayer Blade and then speak through all of her dialogue until she gives you the inverted Carrion statue. Then make your way over to Celevis' rise. You'll find the remains of Celevis, his Preceptor armor set, and his bell bearing. You can still purchase puppets from Celevis' shop by interacting with his body. Next, we'll visit Pitya, the Carrion Servant. In case you forgot how to get to Pitya, drop off the side of the cliff near Celevis's rise down to the lower levels of Caria Manor. Pitya will drop his bell bearing, along with a specific puppet summons. If you gave Celevis's potion to Nefeli, you will get the Nefeli puppet. Otherwise, you'll get the Dolores puppet instead. Finally, if you did not give Celevis' potion to Nefeli, you can now give her the Stormhawk King back at Round Table Hold. This will basically complete Nefeli's quest, but she will not move to her final location where her quest is concluded until after we defeat Morgoth the Omen King at the Elden Throne, which we won't be doing for some time. That's all we'll be covering for now. Feel free to explore the rest of Kaelid, Langdale Royal Capital, and the east side of Altus Plateau, and if you want, you can even complete the rest of Ronnie's questline at this point. The major things you'll want to avoid doing to prevent missing out on content or quests is defeating Morgoth the Omen King and venturing into Mount Gelmir, especially going to the Volcano Manor. I'll include links to guides that I think are worth following near the bottom of this video's description. If you're still having trouble with the quests covered in this video, you can reach out in the comment section where I will do my best to help. I also recommend checking the comment I have pinned as I'll be updating it with information about specific problems people are having and potential solutions. In the next video, we'll be completing a few questlines and progressing many more. You can find it over on my channel, and if you're new, consider subscribing. You're helping me feed my cat? Her name's Marshmallow. Another great way to support the channel is through the Marshmallow merch store. It features professional Elden Ring inspired artwork of your favorite fluffball, with a new Ronnie inspired design available now. Have a great day if you're here today, have a great Thursday, and a great weekend, and as always, thanks for watching.